Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms. You can find show notes for everything I talk about on my blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And if I miss a link, please feel free to contact me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. Or you can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com. Come and join the Ravelry group so you can be eligible for all the prize drawings. And be sure to introduce yourself so that I can get to know you also. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as Bloomy Knitter. And don't forget to click the like button on Facebook for Knitting Blooms. The Lolo Body Bar by Barmaids is an addictive and oh-so-decadent head-to-toe moisturizer made with all-natural skin-loving butters and oils. This amazing bar is most definitely one item that belongs in every fiber artist's stash. Working with yarns and fibers can be so rewarding, even while it steals your moisture and leaves you raw. Lolo by Barmaids is luxurious, creamy, smooth, and so good for your skin. It's easy to use, and there's never any leftover residue that could destroy your latest masterpiece. Protect and soothe your capable, beautiful, creative hands. Trust me, just try the Lolo Bar. The results speak for themselves. Hi and welcome and Happy New Year to all of you. It has been three weeks since I talked to you last. And although it has been three weeks, there hasn't been a ton of knitting progress. Um, I'll get into that in a couple minutes, but before I do that, I just want to kind of give you an overview of, you know, the last few weeks. Obviously, it's been three weeks, which the last time I recorded was before Christmas, and I was looking forward to a long weekend. I had, I took a couple days off before Christmas, so that I had the, a long weekend, I had a five-day weekend, and it was really nice. Uh, we did most of our family gatherings on Saturday, and um, we we met up with Steve's parents and and did our Christmas on Saturday, which was really nice and laid back. Um, usually we go to their house on Christmas Eve, but this year we decided to do something a little bit differently, and um, it was nice. We just um, we met and had lunch, and then went back to um, Steve's mom's house for just a little gathering at her house, and uh, we had a really good time. And then on Christmas Eve, we went over to Steve's niece's house, uh, which is some, something new this year. The reason that we were doing things a little differently was because uh, Steve's mom had some surgery on her shoulder. And she could not do the big, you know, to-do party that she usually does for Christmas Eve. So that's why we did something a little bit different this year. We had a really nice time again at uh, Steve's niece's house. And uh, and then after that, Steve and I just spent Christmas, the rest of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, just the two of us, which is the way we like it. We like a nice, quiet Christmas. And uh, yeah, it was a great, a great holiday. Since then. I have done a lot of reading because last year I had a goal to read 40 books in the year. And at the beginning of December I was quite a ways behind. So a lot of in December, before, even before um, I recorded last, I was doing some reading and some listening to audiobooks to try to get kept caught up on my 40 books for last year. and. So between Christmas and New Year's, I think, I can't remember how many books I had to catch up, but I did a lot of reading between Christmas and New Year's trying to get caught up. And I did end up getting caught up. Um, I think I ended up with like 43 books because at that point I was just, I had gotten so into the reading and, and really enjoying myself doing the reading that I just kept reading. Um, so needless to say, there hasn't been a whole lot of podcast watching. I think the last time I mentioned that I was, whenever I felt the need to watch a podcast, I was just kind of going back to my podcasts and then watching several episodes from one particular podcast. And I think I watched um, Retro Lemon, I watched um, Ozzy Yarning, I think that was it. 
I only watched podcasts a couple of days. So I'm still really far behind on so many other podcasts. It's not even funny. <laughs> I feel like I'm totally out of the loop because I haven't been watching the podcasts. So I don't know what everybody else is doing. But now I have another addiction. I know it's crazy pants. And it is digital scrapbooking. You may already know that I used to do a lot of paper scrapbooking and card making, and I haven't done too much of that since I became a knitter. Well, I've been thinking about doing digital scrapbooking for a while, and I mentioned it over on the My Fitness Pal group. And um, Pat, who is over there, Looney Hiker, she does some digital scrapbooking and she piped up and she, you know, told me about her digital scrapbooking. And then last weekend, I had Knit Club and one of the girls at Knit Club, um, Audrey, she said that she does digital scrapbooking. And I don't even know how we got into talking about it, but um, she ended up really helping me out to get started to kind of find information and so Saturday evening last week I spent all evening Saturday evening and almost all day on Sunday just researching digital scrapbooking how to do it what programs to use um, downloading some kits whatnot so I am completely hooked and I've literally spent almost all my free time since Saturday on it. And I'm finding that I'm getting really overwhelmed with everything that I have to learn. I know if I was just doing digital scrapbooking, you know, taking things that I purchase or download for free, putting them on the pages and just laying them out, it wouldn't be that complicated. But I have to make it complicated. I have been trying to learn how to recolor my own um, elements, you know, so if I'm putting a, pa putting a page together and I have a bow that's a different color than what my layout is, I want to be able to recolor that bow into the color way that will fit that layout. I'm also looking at possibly creating my own elements and whatnot, and there's just a huge learning curve. On that I think what I need to do is kind of step back from it though and just take one step at a time I did join a forum group which is something like Ravelry for the digital scrapbooking and that was kind of a, um, a tip that one of the ladies gave me today was don't try and learn everything just focus on one area learn that and then move on to something new and I think that's what I need to do and I also need to limit my exposure because I think I'm just getting I've like I said I've spent hours and hours t looking at the stuff and you know finding new websites and whatnot and I think it's a little overwhelming and I just need to step back because I'm afraid that if I don't I will get so overwhelmed and burn myself out before I even really get a chance to get started so that is what has been taking up a lot of my time. Now that has only been since Saturday. That's only like, we're talking five days. Um, but I did do some, some knitting prior to that. Um, and I'm going to get into showing you that. But before I get into showing you my knitting, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to actually, I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to talk um, just briefly about my spinning. Because we are doing a... Um, a spin along this month, Spinuary for January. And my goal for January is to finish up my um, fiber nymph. Hang on, I'm trying to find my notes. I thought I had pulled them up. Apparently, I didn't. Um, I would like to finish my fiber nymph fiber from Knitopia 2013 because I want to start my sweater that I've been spinning for before Knittopia 2014. So I have 
oops. So I have one more braid to go and I've made a decent amount of progress on that braid. I guess I shouldn't say a decent amount considering how much I've been spinning in the last few months. It is a decent amount. I've probably spun hmm, maybe a fourth of the first half. So that's like an eighth of the four ounce braid. Um, and I'd like to finish it in January. And what I'm doing is I am spinning at home. I've been, this week I've been coming home from work and spinning in the evening. Even though I have been wanting to pull out the computer and look at the digital scrapbooking stuff, I haven't done that. Because, like I said, I spent most of the day at the office looking at digital scrapbooking stuff and I thought, you know, I just need to get away from the computer for a little bit. So that's what I've been doing. I've been spinning um, my fiber nymph. I also have on the wheel still my um, North Cabin Fiber Crafts, which I have made significant progress on the first braid. I have two braids of, of four ounces and I probably have three ounces done. I just have one more ounce or approximately one more ounce left to go of the first braid. And that is coming along. That's coming along a little quicker because I am spinning it a little thicker and uh, then the fiber nymph. The fiber nymph I'm spinning rather thin because that's going to be a four ply yarn. So if you are a spinner or want to begin spinning, then you can enter to win some prizes for January, for spinuary. Right now we have some bobbins up to give away. I have, um, I think I'm going to give it away as two separate prizes, two bobbins up um, for two prizes. If we have, if we don't have that many entries, then maybe I'll just give it away four bobbins to one winner. And then probably at least one more braid of fiber. I haven't pulled out um, a prize for that yet, but I will look through my my prize stash and pull out some fiber. So there will be at least two prizes, um, possibly three if we have a lot of entries, then I'll separate those bobbins up and probably um, try and find two braids of fiber. Depends on how many people enter. So get your spinning going. And like I said, my goal is to finish, at least finish the four ounce braid of the fiber nymph so that I can start plying it. I don't think it's going to take too long to ply, although I have, what, how many ounces? Like 12 ounces? Is it 12? No, 16 ounces. No. 24 ounces. Is it 24 ounces? Yeah, I had six braids, so it must be 24 ounces. Um, so yeah. That's my spinning. I don't have, like I said, I don't have it. I don't have it over here. It's on the bobbins. You'll see it sometime. So let's get into the knitting. I have two pseudo finished objects. They're, they're finished technically. They just need to be cast off. I don't know why I do this, but, um, I have a pair of socks. These are my North Cabin Fibercrafts socks, and they just need to be cast off. I mean, literally, they're at this point. I don't know why I do this. <laughs> I think it's because I can't really cast off while I'm bouncing. As you know, I usually knit my stockinette socks while I am bouncing on my BOSU ball. And even though I can bounce and knit stockinette or even bounce and knit ribbing. I can't really bounce and 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 cast off. Not without potentially dropping stitches. So, I don't. And then they sit and I think, "Okay, I really should do that." And they're just like, "No, I got to do this and I got to do that and I haven't done it." And I was going to do it last night instead of spinning so that I could at least show it to you cast off. But I said, "No." I need to spin. And then I thought, well, I'll take them to work with me and cast them off. Well, I didn't take them to work with me, but I really didn't knit sitting down today. Only knitting I did at work today was bouncing. So I have two stockinette socks. You can see there, there are my um, markers from the last time. 
I was just at the heel on both of them um, the last time and I did the leg and the cuffs and now I'm ready to cast off um, and they will be cast off this week definitely I love this yarn this was her I did a rod base and I love this yarn. I have to get me some more of this. Um, it is so squishy and so soft. I knit them on size zeros and it's just plain stockinette sock. You know, I have to have a million pairs of socks. <laughs> and I did give my mother-in-law socks for Christmas this year and um, I gave them to her on that Saturday before Christmas and then on Christmas Eve we saw each other and she mentioned how much she loved the socks. She had already worn them and she loved them. So I have a feeling that I'm going to have to be making some socks for her again in the future. But these are for me. So that's my first pseudo finished object. My second pseudo finished object are my Into the World socks, which are also not cast off. <laughs> Again, we get to that point. I got them all done through the, the ribbing and they're there. In fact, I don't even have a stitch marker in this one. I think this one was probably pretty close to the last time and there's a stitch marker there. So I've done quite a bit and I do my legs kind of long. These are a little shorter than the other pair but I kind of base my leg because I do my my toe my socks toe up and I base the length of my leg by the foot of my sock typically I knit until um, I knit my stockinette portion until I reach the tip of my toe and then do an inch to two inches of ribbing in this case I started my ribbing just a tad bit before the end of my toe so my leg is a little bit shorter but Again, just need to be cast off. That's it. Final step in this process. So, and this is uh, Into the World, like I said. And let's see what their what her base is. This is 80% um, Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. And this is the Candy, bra uh, candy Bracelet colorway. So, yeah, two new pairs of socks for me if I could just get them cast off. Um, on this pair, I don't know how I did it, but I think it was on this one. Somehow I ended up with an extra stitch after the heel turn. Because you'll see the um, patterning is a little bit different on this one than it is this one, or maybe it was this one. I don't remember which one it was anyway. One of them I ended up with the wrong number of stitches after the heel turn and I didn't count my stitches and I just kept working up and then I realized it and so then I, I think it was this one because then I changed the stitch count on this one to increase one stitch. Oh well, it is what it is. I wanted to have the same number of stitches in the end so that's why I went and added the extra stitch on the other one even though it, it screwed up the patterning a little bit but that's okay they're just socks for me and most of the time my socks are hidden by my pants so no worries in that respect so again this is another pair of socks that will be cast off this week and that will be able to go into rotation I have started another pair of socks but this pair of socks is not for me. And I have a little story to tell you. I will, I'll show you the socks first. Actually, I'll tell you about the socks. I am going to make some socks for my father-in-law. Um, this year, like I said before, I made some socks for my mother-in-law and she really enjoyed them. And I have thought about making socks for my father-in-law, but I think his foot is like, 13 inches I want to say I think his foot is 13 inches I don't know what size shoe he wears but when I had them do their measurements a few years back um, I'm just looking on my phone because I have oops let's see photos I'm still trying to get used to how 
these photos work. His foot is, okay, his foot length is 11 and 3 quarters inches. <clears throat> so anyway, I had them do their measurements and I have, have um, a file and I just took a snapshot, shat, snapshot of it and put it in my phone so I have it. Anyway, he has a big foot. I don't know what size shoe he wears. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't have them put this, the shoe size. Just the number of inches because that's how I do my socks anyway. So I've been thinking about doing socks for him. And I think I've been kind of putting it off because I wasn't sure if I had enough yarn to make socks for him. Because he likes his the leg of his socks to be around 9 inches. And then you have an almost 12 inch foot. That is is not going to be that is not going to be accomplished with one skein of sock yarn of normal sock yarn you know like um a 400 to 450 yards so i've been putting it off but then after i gave my mother-in-law socks for christmas i thought okay next christmas it's going to be all about my father-in-law because I didn't give him any knitting knitted wear this year. So I want to give him some socks for next year and probably a scarf. But I am trying to work only from my stash, which means it's going to be a little bit difficult to do um, if I'm trying to do a gift for somebody because honestly, I'm really attached to my yarn. I know it's sad um so when I when I go to make something if I if if there's a yarn that I really really love I want to make something for myself I don't want to make something for somebody else so I have a tendency to go and buy more yarn when I am getting ready to make a gift for somebody but this year, I'm really going to do my absolute best to work from my stash. So, I went through all of my stuff on Ravelry. And because I have everything in Ravelry, other than the most recent stuff that I've purchased, um, I can look through my stash on Ravelry, sort it, figure out how much yardage I have on each thing, and whatnot. And I had an idea of what yarn I wanted to use for the socks. And I started the socks, and I weighed the yarn, and I started the socks, and I got a bit, a bit of the way down the sock, and I'm like, there is absolutely no possible way that I'm going to get a pair of socks for him out of this one colorway. So I had to do a little bit more looking, and I, have, I actually have three skeins of yarn and I don't even think I have the ball band in here let's see if it's tucked underneath um no but I have three skeins of yarn in like a sport I think it's a, a, a heavy fingering or sport weight 150 grams each and I have one in navy one in black and one in like um an oatmeal color and I thought okay I probably can knit some socks if I do it two-tone, which is what I have started. And here's the first one. I'm doing the cuff, the heel, and the toe in this oatmeal type color. And then the main sock is going to be in navy. Um, and then the other pair, the other color is black, so it will be the oatmeal color and then the black um, as the main sock color. And there's been a few false starts on this. I started with the cuff and I did something. Um, I had a cast on a couple of times and I finally found out what I wanted to do for the cuff and I worked the cuff. And this is the color that I started with and I actually worked down the leg a bit and was like, no, there's, this isn't going to happen. So that's when I ripped it back to the, um, to the ribbing. And then... I really thought as I was working down the leg that the number of stitches, which was 68, was going to be too tight, was going to be too small. 
So then I decided to increase, when I ripped it back, I decided to increase to 70 stitches after the ribbing. So I increased to 70 stitches and I got probably about this much through and I was thinking, I measured it and I'm like, ah, 70 stitches might just be too much. So I ripped it back again, back to the ribbing and only kept the 68 stitches. So that's where I am. I cast on 68 stitches. I did a two by two rib and then I am working down in plain stockinette. I had considered doing the two by two rib the entire sock. Um, but honestly, I would go insane. <laughs> I can, I much more enjoy the stockinette because like I said, I do a lot of my knitting, uh, my sock knitting, my stockinette sock knitting while I'm bouncing. So it kind of keeps me occupied and I don't, you know, get bored with it. Um, so yeah, I did, I decided to just switch over to the stockinette and go from there. Now I did weigh the ball. I am doing one sock at a time in this particular case. Usually I do two socks and as you can see, I'm doing cuff down. Originally when I was started these socks, I was going to do cuff down with the oatmeal color and do a heel flap and gusset until I realized there was no possible way I was getting socks out of this um, one color. That's why I am now doing a short row heel for the heel and um, instead. I really wanted to do a, um, a gusset, but because I think it fits different people's feet better. I think the short row heel is, is if you, um, you either like it or you don't. It either fits you or it doesn't. Uh, so it's more likely that a uh, gusset and uh, heel flap would work better than a short row heel. But I don't really have that flexibility with working with a two-tone sock. And even though the day that I was going through all these um, trials and tribulations, I was on the internet thinking about buying more yarn to make socks. And I just kept saying, no, no, let's try and do it with this yarn. Now, maybe it won't work. Maybe I'll get to the toe and there just is not going to be enough yarn. And if that is what turns out, then I will buy more yarn to make him socks. But I'm hoping that this will work and I will be able to use up some stash and make him some socks. Two pairs. That's my goal. Now, I also mentioned I want to make him a scarf. I do not have the yarn for that scarf. I was thinking about using some hand spun, which I still might do. Um, the, the hand spun that I just recently finished with the blues and the greens and the multi, I was that is actually knit in a um, fingering weight, but if I hold it double, if I take the blue the blues in the multi and the greens in the multi and hold it together, it just might work because I don't have enough of one um, color or the other that I can hold that one double. So I may do that. I have to see how much yardage I have of that. If I have enough yardage of both of them to hold them double and then knit them. Um, if I have at least 440 yards total, I might do that. I might give it a shot. Um, otherwise, I might have to buy yarn. And because it's a scarf that will be worn more often than, say, a pair of socks, because maybe he wears a pair of socks and then they have to be washed, uh, but whereas a scarf, you might be able to wear it a couple days in a row. Um, I'm thinking that it might be a better option to have the scarf be super wash. And I don't think that hand spun that I did recently um, is super wash. So I have to kind of decide, you know, what I'm going to do, um, if I'm going to go with the hand spun, if I'm going to buy more yarn. Um, I have chosen a alternative um, if I decide to buy yarn, which is going to be a Barocco vintage in like a charcoal color. I don't want to have to buy yarn because I've been doing so well with not buying any new yarn that I'd like to keep it up. Um, I'd like to really try and work pr 
primarily from Stash this year. Uh, but I am going to give myself a bit of leeway if, again, if I'm going to be knitting a, a gift for somebody. Uh, but I have to cast that on right away. It has to be definitely, I'm buying this specifically for that gift. Um, and I'm going to cast it on right away. Okay, so let's move on to the final project that um, I'm going to show you this week. And it is my Knit Swirl. And I have made a good amount of progress on this. Again, this is the yarn that I dyed. This was originally um, Peyton's um, Classic Wool. And I dyed up eight skeins um, in a kettle dye to do this sweater. I had lots of Peyton's and actually had bought this Peyton's yarn to do a different sweater, but um, since I had enough to do the knit swirl, I decided to go ahead and dye it for this specific, specific one. Now, I'm going to try and show you this without losing stitches on the other side because I'm in the middle of a round, but um, I want to show you my, the beginning of my round. Okay, so here is the beginning of the round and my stitch marker from where I was last time. And again, I'm still kind of getting used to this camera. Which way to turn, <laughs> whatnot. So there I am at the beginning of the round. So I've done quite a bit since the last time I showed you. I've done uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight welts. And I'm starting my uh, ninth welt. What I want to talk about for this is that this side that I'm showing you here is the wrong side. Now, at the beginning of, and again, I'm trying to keep from losing stitches. I might have to just put those in my... Um, at the beginning, I was carrying... Again, I'm trying, <laughs> getting used to this camera. I was carrying the yarn up the inside of the... Of the sweater you see here the lines that are going up there like that and I did not like how that was looking but if you look closely you see the lines here on the reverse stockinette but on the stockinette section you don't see that pronu pronunciation of the line so what I did was when I was working the I'm actually working with this side facing me even though it's the wrong side um, because that's just how they have you join in the round. Um, I know. I'm busy right now. Can you go lay down? I'll be with you in just a moment. That's how they join, join in the round. So at the beginning, like I said, I was carrying it up always on the wrong side. But when I noticed that when you when I worked in stockinette, um, <laughs> I just can't get this. Um, where is it? When I, Cody, I know. What is it that you need, sweetie? Can you sit right here next to me and wait? Be patient, okay? Just be patient. Um, so when I realized that on the stockinette side, it wasn't showing, I decided to, thanks, I decided to car carry up the yarn on the reverse side for those stockinette sections, for those reverse stockinette sections. So as you can see further up, um, you don't see that line as predominant. predominant. Now, I see as I'm looking at it on the camera, um, you can see where the where the where the yarn is carried up, but 
it's really not that noticeable. And I think that once I block it, it won't be noticeable at all. So I'm actually alternating my yarn every single row. Um, Cody, please don't chew on that. Um, just because it's making it easy uh, and I don't have to worry about big gaps. So it's working out quite well, as you can see. And it's going pretty smoothly. <laughs> Showing it to the camera is not going smoothly, but the knitting part is. And this is a great project because I can read and knit at the same time. I can't work on this project while I am bouncing because there's so much weight on it. I can't hold this and trying to show you this today is I've got all everything all twisted up now. Um, but yeah, it's a great project. I am using my um, eBay needles. And I am really enjoying these needles. Again, the the bend in it, I don't really notice with this bigger circumference. Not like the socks. I'm I'm still struggling a little bit doing the socks on the um, on the the eBay needles. Um, but I do like it for this particular project. There's I have no problem whatsoever with the bend on the needles for this large circumference, and um, it's working out quite well for me. I'm really enjoying it. I've made quite a bit of progress. I think I am on, well, I'm on welt 16. I think this is going a little quicker than my last knit swirl did, but I don't know for sure. I didn't keep real good notes about what, how many welts I had done after a certain point of time and whatnot. Um, but I think it took me six months to do the last one, and this one seems to be going a little quicker. But I'm in, really enjoying using the yarn that I dyed up. Um, it came out really, really cool, and I'm really enjoying using that. Um, I think that's what's keeping me motivated to keep working on it when I am knitting. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. So that's all the knitting progress I have to show you today. I have briefly worked on my little big shrug um in fact i just worked on it i think i did two rows this week um just because i wanted to make some progress on it but not too much i haven't worked on my transitioning to winter shawl probably since the last time i recorded um it just hasn't been motivating me to work on it um and because i was doing a lot of reading i couldn't read and do that shawl and then with the scrapbooking, I just haven't knit that. Um, Marley's Garden, I have not done any more on that either. Haven't made any progress on that whatsoever. I think I might have worked on the log cabin blanket for Sammy. Um, I was like watching a lot of the Christmas movies on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and the day after Christmas and I think I was knitting on the log cabin blanket during that time. But other than that, I don't think I got much progress on that. I have not worked on my sock yarn blanket at all in quite some time. I think since um, Knitting in the Mitten when I did... Can you, can you sit still? The sock yarn blanket didn't get worked on since Knitting in the Mitten when I did the Knitting in the Mitten colorways. So I'm hoping that I can step back from the digital scrapbooking a little bit and try and limit my time with that each day so I can get back to doing some knitting. I have a couple of um, pattern ideas in my head that I would really like to get some samples knit um, from or to at least start working up my swatches and whatnot. Um, and unless I can do devote some time to knitting, that's not going to happen. So I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks that I can get back to doing some knitting, make some more progress on my projects, make some progress on my um, designs that I have in mind, and be able to share more with you guys. I know I had a couple of tutorials the last few weeks while I wasn't recording a podcast, and so I hope you enjoyed those tutorials. 
I did notice today when I went to go draw for prizes that I totally forgot to put the thread up for the head to toe book from Cooperative Press. So I'm going to play the, um, the review or the, you know, the information that I put in the last podcast again here and then um, I set up the thread already so that you have a chance to win this book. So I'm putting this um, this review in again just so that you can have a refresher and then you can go over and um, enter to win in that thread. I can't believe I didn't set it up and everybody was probably so busy with Christmas that nobody said hey where's the thread. Today I'm going to be reviewing the ebook Head to Toe by Cooperative Press, which can be purchased on the Cooperative Press website for $16.95. Or you could also purchase the PDF as well as the print version on the Cooperative Press website for $26.95. Just as the title suggests, this book contains patterns for parts of the body from head to toe, including the head, the neck, the hands, and the feet. This book contains a total of 24 patterns. What I expected when I saw the title of this book was patterns that would coordinate with one another for the head to the toes. As I already mentioned, there are patterns for the head to the toes, but they don't use the same stitch pattern. But they do use some of the same techniques, like color work, twisted rib, cables, and textured stitches. I did notice that almost all of the patterns were marked for an intermediate knitter, but I think an adventurous beginner would also do just fine with these patterns. One of the things that I really liked at the beginning of the book was the things to know section. And in that section, there is some information about yarn substitution. A more seasoned knitter will already know to consider not only the gauge and the weight of a yarn substitution, but also the fiber content. Although someone who hasn't been knitting very long may not know that these are important factors. There is also a section concerning swatching, and it mentions that if you are going to be knitting in the round, you should be knitting a swatch in the round. And again, this is something that maybe a knitter who hasn't been knitting very long may not realize is important to think about. On the other hand, in the tips and techniques section, it mentions that a pattern may tell you to work each stitch as it presents itself. Meaning, if the stitch below is a knit stitch, then you would knit that next stitch. And if the next stitch was a purl stitch, you would purl that next stitch. However, there are knitters that do not know how to read their knitting and may not realize what stitch they are supposed to do in that particular case. So I do recommend that if you would like to knit a project out of this book, that you learn how to read your knitting to be able to tell whether you are working a knit stitch or a purl stitch. This is a very basic concept, and honestly, I think all knitters should be able to read their knitting, at least to realize if they are working a knit stitch or a purl stitch. I found that most of the patterns in this book, although they are simple concepts, they are very creatively designed. Now I will run through a few of the patterns in this book. Starting with head things. The first pattern that I will talk about is the North Umberland hat. This is a stock and a hat with just a touch of color work. The next hat is the Simon side, which is a ribbed hat with a wide cable. The next hat is Degar, which is I think how you pronounce it. It is a stockinette hat with a splash of twisted rib to add pizzazz. And then there's the Whalem hat, which again has twisted rib with a little twist on that. And now we will move on to the neck things. The first being Harbottle, which is a simple cow with a bit of a texture followed by tying green, which again is a simple pattern, but has a cable. And then there is checkers, which incorporates a Mobius and is worked in a basket weave type pattern. 
followed by milfportlet, which is a scarf that has lots of different textures throughout the scarf. And if you would like to do some color work in a scarf, then try wetland, which uses the double knitting technique. And now we move on to the hand things. The first pattern is doodle gloves, which uses color work. And there are patterns for both mitts and gloves. And then there's Chevoit Hills, which incorporates different textures to make some fantastic mitts. And if you're looking for just a simple rib with a bit of cable, then try the backhand hitch. And now moving on to a couple of the foot patterns. The first one being cobbles, which contains a simple seed stitch type pattern for the leg and just a plain stockinette foot. And then there's peg whistle, which again uses the twisted stitch type pattern with a twist. And again, if you want to have some color work in your socks, then try cannon fire. And there you have it, loads of patterns for the head, neck, hands, and feet for that little one of yours that you need to keep nice and warm. Again, you can purchase this book on the Cooperative Press website for $16.95. That's for the ebook version. Or you can purchase the print and the ebook version for $26.95. And I have some other drawings to do, which we will do right now. Oh, you be quiet. Oh, before we do that, before we do the drawings, we are doing a colorwork mitten. Now, I told you I was doing uh, a colorwork mitten knit along. I told you I was doing the Marley's Garden, and that is my project for the colorwork mittens. Now, the colorwork mitten knit along has been going since December, and it's going through the end of January. There have not been very many people who have done who have entered. So, if you get a pair of mittens completed between now and the end of January, you have a really good chance of winning a prize, which I'm not really sure what the prizes will be yet, but they will be something fabulous. So get your color work mittens started. They really don't take that long if you work on them. <laughs> if you don't work on them, they could take you forever. <laughs> so let's do the prizes. Actually, I don't know why I keep putting my iPad down because the prizes are listed on my iPad. Okay, so we have the drawing for North Cabin Fibercrafts. Cody, can you lay down, please? Hmm? Wow. I know. Yes, I know, you crazy little nut. Cody is being very needy, apparently, tonight. Okay, so we have three prizes for North Cabin Fibercrafts. I think there was... Um, 13 entries. There was actually 20 posts, but there was a little bit of chatter in there. Mine was the first post. I think there was a deleted post, um, but there was 13 projects. The first prize, and of course I didn't bring them over here, but you've seen them before. Um, the first prize is a um, braid of fiber in the uh, patio cushions colorway. And that goes to number three, Mimmers, who is Amy. So congratulations, Amy. You have won the fiber. And it just so happens that I know Amy is a spinner because one of the things that she uh, posted, um, and actually I think it was post number three, um, was fiber that she spun from North Cabin Fiber Crafts. Okay, are you going to lay over there now? That's good. I don't know what it is with him tonight. The second winner is for the the big, huge, monstrous project bag that Lori makes. She makes these fabulous project bags that you can fit. I could almost fit in these bags. And that goes to number 13, and that's Midge817. And that would be Midge. Congratulations on winning, both of you. And then the last prize is a $20 gift certificate to North Cabin Fiber Crafts. And I'm not sure how that works. I don't know if I can do it specifically for Lori's shop or if I have to just send Lori the money. We'll figure it all out. But it's a $20 gift certificate to North Cabin Fiber Crafts. 
And that goes to number six, who is Miss Melody, and that's Joanne. So congratulations to all of you. Thanks so much for uh, playing along with the, uh, the knit along for North Cabin Fiber Crafts. I hope you really enjoyed the yarn or fiber that you purchased from her and will purchase more in the future. So I will definitely be doing more of these um, yarn indie dyer type knit alongs in the future. The next prize is for the iTunes drawing. It is a new month, I know. I think the last time I did um, a podcast, I um, did an iTunes comment drawing. Um, but it's a new month, so we have another one for December. And I did put the three new people in here um, from the, that posted their comment between the last time I recorded, which was the 20-something of January, or I'm sorry, of December, and now there's a couple of Januaries. I think there was a two, two Januaries from Canada and one December from the U.S. So I have those three in here, and I am going to draw a winner. Is that interesting to you, seeing those little slips of paper? Uh-huh. So here we go. Here, here's for the drawing the winner. One, one winner, one winner for a $7 or less pattern. Here it is. And I believe this one was added last time. This is, um, it's marked as Akron, Ohio. So if you posted a comment in the group, I think it was in December, or November, you know what? I probably should put the dates on here. It's probably not going to happen. I just know I remember this one because when I um, copied the new names over to print it out, I remember seeing this. So I believe you posted sometime um, in November. And if you posted a comment in November, why isn't that not focusing? And your username or your whatever, however you posted it, is Akron, Ohio. Then get in contact with me and you win a pattern of $7 or less. And those are our prizes for this time. I think that was all the prizes that we have. So we've got, right now the knit alongs that we have going on are the colorwork mittens that is from Jan from December to January. And then we have spinuary, which is January only. So in spinuary, you have to spin four ounces and ply it in January to qualify. You can spin eight ounces and enter it twice. You can spin 12 ounces and get three chances, what have you. It has to be four ounces, spun, plied in January. And like I said, there will be prizes. Um, next time I will have another book review. I have several book reviews to do for you, but like I said, I forgot to post the thread for head to toe, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it as that for now and, um, work on the other book reviews coming up. And I think that's all we have for this time. I hope everybody is staying warm. I know I'm trying to stay warm. Um, it's been, it has been mighty cold here. I mean, so cold. I know it's probably been cold everywhere in the country. Um, colder than normal temperatures. And when you're hoping that it's 20 degrees, <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty cold. It has been sub-zero um, in the morning um, every day this week. And a lot of the country got hit with a big snowstorm, and we were part of that. We got about, I think, almost 10 inches on Sunday and Sunday, or Saturday night through Sunday evening. Or, yeah, I think it was Sunday evening it kind of stopped and tapered off, you know, after dark. Um, so, yeah, we've been digging out from that and just dealing with the cold weather and... Just staying in and, and trying to keep warm, you know. I have been knitting, like I said, a little bit, but not that much. Um, you would think that with the cold temperatures, I'd be wanting to knit a lot and just 
cuddle up with my knitwear, but that hasn't happened. But like I said, I hope you guys are staying warm. I hope you are doing lots of knitting. If you are into digital scrapbooking, I would love to hear um, about your pages and even post if you want to post some pages in the thread. I did start a thread earlier this week about digital scrapbooking in hopes that somebody, some people could give me tips and tricks and whatnot. I have done a lot of research, like I said, and have been watching a ton of tutorials, so I have learned a lot. But like I said earlier, I think I need to step back a little bit, focus on one particular part, um, maybe watch the tutorial and then try and recreate the tutorial because I'm not learning, I'm not retaining all the information as I watch the tutorials. I see it and I'm like, oh yeah, that's easy, okay. And then I move on and watch another tutorial. And then I try to go back and do it and I'm like, I can't remember where those functions were and whatnot. So anyway, I'm going to try not to get overwhelmed with the digital scrapbooking. And I'm also going to try not to um, have my time dominated by it. I have been also um, reevaluating my exercise and weight loss plan because I've kind of gained back some of the weight that I lost last year. Although my size hasn't changed, which is a good thing, which means that the weight that I've gained back has been mostly muscle, but um, I want to reevaluate and try and really dig in and get focused this year and stop slacking off. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope you will come back next time. So bye for now. No matter what time of year it is, your feet can be sandal ready. We all know there are hundreds of thousands of feet that are in need of some serious help, and O oh for Feet Sake by Barmaids can help. O oh for Feet Sake is a solid foot moisturizer, and Barmaids uses the perfect combination of skin loving oils, butters, and ingredients ideal for your feet, including essential oils. You will be amazed at how quickly O oh for Feet Sake can turn your feet from rough and dry to smooth and soft. Just follow the instructions and in less than two weeks you will see drastic improvement to your feet. You can purchase O for Feet Sake at www.bar-maids.com. There are two scents, Soft Vanilla and Peppermint Plus.